kind of hard burn.
So let's say Kyle is much bigger, Kyle is gathered is much bigger than mine. He's going to pick that up on our marbling table. And our marbling table is just a stainless steel table. Um, stainless steel is really nice. We put all of our tools and our pipes are made out of. And stainless steel doesn't heat up as quickly as regular steel. So when we're working with everything, we want to make sure that we can really touch all of the tools because we can't really touch the glass. So our stainless steel marble works for the, as a way to shape the glass. And you'll see Steve use it a couple different ways. Um, he can really change his angle and that will allow him to have a lot more control over where the air is going. So you can see with that low angle, he's trying to really chill the shoulder, which is what we would call the top of the bubble, or it means the pipe. I'm guessing Steve's taking one more dip on this. Maybe two, if he's feeling adventurous. But he's going to use our wood block tool and he's going to let that really, really set up. Now that he has that hot, hot bubble, if he goes in right now, it can really easily collapse. And like I said, both of our tools are made out of stainless steel. So if you look at Steve's tool, that's what these nice, shiny tools. But those wood blocks are special because they're made out of wood. And I know it's crazy, wood should really catch on fire really quickly. But those, those wood blocks are made out of cherry wood or fruit wood. They have a really tight grain pattern. So with that low sap content, that wood's not going to catch on fire as easily. We're just going to wait for that to set up. He's making a lovely dragon today from Sleeping Beauty. So as we're working, we can start to talk about Sleeping Beauty when we have a little bit of downtime. He's going to get one more dip, and he's doing, he's doing what we call a strip gather. So when he goes vertical up and down, the weight of that glass is going to physically pull it off of the bubble. It can be really hard to control how much material you're getting. So that strip gather allows us to physically pull a little bit off if we have too much. So he's going to cool that pipe down. And now the different layers of glass are really different heats. We keep going to into our glass brick. And I can show you guys what that looks like up close. Glass color comes in a couple of different varieties. So Steve today is working with Sprit, which is one of the easiest ways of putting color onto glass. He's got a nice, small, sort of punctured glass. And since this is the same type of glass that we keep in our furnace, we can just pick that right up onto that hot bubble. And that'll really fuse onto it and make it one sort of homogenous color. And Steve will do a couple of layers of that just so that this dragon looks really okay. Glass color doesn't really work like paint color. So keep working with black today. We can't mix a bunch of colors of glass together and make black. Glass color is all formed chemically. So we have a nice color with her so that everybody in the studio can make whatever color glass they want. But when we introduce these colors, we're really introducing different metals into the glass. So if you were to be working with, let's say, a copper blue, we would take, we'd take a tank full of colorless glass Throw a little bit of copper in there, and that's going to take the entire pot blue. This can be tough, because if Steve goes back into that furnace again right now, that glass is so hot that it can all fall right off back in there. And then the whole pot is going to be tinted a certain color. So we really have to be careful when we're working with this color. And the same goes with if we were to mix different types of colors on the surface of one bubble. If Steve were to throw some white on top of this, it could really easily have chemical reactions between the two metals that would then cause it to probably turn around or get shiny or do something crazy. So Steve's monitoring that up. You'll notice Steve's taking that into that nice, cozy, thick cone shape. That's so that here we can't really touch it or feel it. We sort of have to wait till the entire thing's done to see how it sits on a table or how it feels in our hand. So he wants to reinforce that bottom weight. Just because if we take a top heavy object and we put it on a shelf, it can be really easily knocked over by a person or like a cat. And since we're working with such a fragile material, we really have to plan ahead of time before we actually have to keep fit. We just hear Steve and Joe talk a little bit. In here it's really a team sport, so you'll notice there's a lot of us on the floor. And if Steve were making something with like two or more gathers, we probably need all of this. And so on with this squeeze, we can do a little bit of shaping, pumping it up. But we sort of adapted. 
connected to a post-pandemic hot shop. So we're all wearing masks, keep our holes, they blow a hose if you use it, then you can then connect to the end of the pipe. He's going to give that a little bit of heat. Now he's going to physically start shaping it. Let's see if you can hear how hot sculpting, which is a lot different from our usual demo. You should usually see us take a vessel or something more functional. But this can get really fun. This is sort of our part of hot sculpting. We can sort of make any shape we want in here using the skills we learn when we're making things like cups and bowls to then make future sculptures of different types of artwork. He's putting in our jackknife right now. And this jackknife is sort of a constriction point. It's telling the glass where we want it to physically break off of the pipe. You notice now that the collection of the pipe stuck to the end of it. So we sort of have to tell that glass where we want it to go. And when the glass is hot, it has certain properties that we can either really use for our advantage or we're working against the entire time. He's going to heat that up a little bit. And if he were to make that jack line and then make it too wide, when he goes to break this off, it physically won't come off the pipe where we want it. He's using a little bit of gravity. He's giving it a nice body shape. You can see how he's lifting and putting the pipe down. And he can really use gravity to his advantage. Normally in here when you're working and we're making like a vessel or something, you'll notice us turn really the entire time. We're really in control of how the shape is moving. So once we get into hot sculpting like this, you'll notice it's a lot harder for the to turn because we're not in that sort of centered shape. We're getting cool. So now you can sort of tell the body of our dragon. He's going with his diamond shears, which is one of our special glass blowing tools. The diamond shears don't cut like your regular scissors or your straight shears. They're going to cut from all different directions. So when you hold them up, like you hold up a pair of scissors, instead of a straight line, it forms a diamond. So he's going to get a little bit of heat. Now he has to be really careful because we have that irregular shape. And this sucks in. If it gets too hot towards the neck or where we made that constriction line, that whole thing is going to flop all over the place. So you can really tell he's spot heat down towards the bottom, or oh, where I'm guessing is the body? Yeah. Yeah. You would be better than right. <laughs> so that's our tail, a little bit at the end. Well, it's part of it. It's part of it. Part of it. Yeah, nice a bit, like really good. The nose going to make Steve a nice bit. And the really cool thing about hot glass is that hot glass sticks to hot glass really well. So when we're working with things like metal, we got to do a little bit of so if glass is long and it's hot enough, it'll stick right to that bubble really easily. This is the key more part where you really hear a coffee boot so can't do what we call a bit. So he's just getting a nice double dip. He can really get any sort of mass of glass and he's gonna tack it on here. Since Steve's letting his bubble set up a little bit, and if that bubble stays nice and cool, Steve can add whatever kind Glass on it and then change that shape. So while we're waiting for this to set up, Joe's gonna get a bit ready. We can talk a little bit about the dragon that specifically see this lake. Oh, they're getting an octave hole. We're getting fancy, guys. So Steve's making the dragon this looking beauty. Um she knows the whistle really takes advantage of that property. This is how we make things like pumpkins, and you know how they have those ridges? Not much, just a little. Just give it a little swing. He's going to go straight up and down, and Steve can just attach that top bit right onto his bubble. And since his bubble isn't cold enough that it's going to break, but not hot enough that this is going to change the shape, he can really manipulate that really hot glass and then cut it off with his straight shape. It's just like your regular scissor. So Willow is just about to get invited to the birthday party, and she takes it out on um, Young Aurora or Sleeping Beauty by then putting a purse on her. So on her 16th birthday, she's going to get tricked, and then the whole town is going to fall asleep. She's going to cut that off for really you. You can really see how much time he has to physically nice manipulate that pot of cereal. Just going to get another bit. He's going to coat it in our black grip. And that's going to give a little bit of a different look to it. So I'm going to get out of his way. There's something about bringing bits is that even 
take another bit. And as long as Steve is doing what we call flashing or taking maintenance piece, we can work on this piece all day. If we were making, let's say, a giant nice. chandelier, yeah. and we were working a regular nine to five day, we can really realistically work on that all day. And then we would hire somebody whose job is to just flash the piece at lunch. So if you ever hear me talk about Steve taking flashes, those are just our maintenance piece. So you see them going really quick, it's just going to get a maybe like a five to ten second heat, and then it'll come back out. And it's got a little bit of color, but this black is such a soft That's color. It really yeah, flows really quickly without a lot of heat. Joe's going up and down, and we can stick that right on there. Steve's lifting up at an angle. And he never really has to like, Left. The really nice thing is that that bit immediately fuses to the glass that we saw on the board. Somebody get me some different straight shears that we have back all the time. We're getting another set of straight shears too. The tough thing about hot sculpting is that Steve only has this much room for all of his tools. So there are hot sculptors who will have one specific tool just to add one specific type of texture. But there's a guy who makes snakes and he has one tool just to get that snake scale. Okay, Colin, this is what I want. I want you to... He's got lots of around 1200 degrees and we got to boost it all the way back up to 
you can shake up that tail a little bit. You see how that black is really blowing? So you think it'd be really hot, so you can't really move it too much. Alright, go ahead and bring that. Go ahead and bring our bed over. He's going to take it straight up and down. This is so that gravity doesn't pull it from one side or the other. It's pulling it nice and evenly. And so you can stretch that bit out and then cut it right off of the gear. And you see it has those nice bridges still. You can that memory of the glass. Give it a little bit more of 
right side is starting to move a little bit. We know that that's nice and happy. We can let that set up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to want another two. Actually, let's do the head first. Give me a nice big single gather uh, cover this bit. And we're going to start working on our head. This is a lot of bit. And then whatever's left, I'm going to use it as well. So we'll go right and feed back up whatever's left. Okay, so let it hang off just a little bit. You'll see Joe with a lot of flies on and oil. Okay. And the really nice thing about working with glass with the gravity is that that gravity can then pull that glass right off of the pipe. Heat that up. And it'll allow us to use it. So it's going to eat up that little extra bit of glass while Steve does this tiny detail. And then Steve's going to test that right back on there just like he did with the wing. Alright, go ahead and bring that. You can see sort of how he's made that top fin. For our reptilian dragon. Gotta do this twice. Once. We put our eyes on there, right. make a tiny, tiny contact, and then you can physically thin that out with this diamond screw. Sure.
way for us.
Those are currently up for about 11 months. So if you wait till tomorrow, it feels like enough. You have to wait for that. It feels like forever. So all of our galleries are open if you guys ever want to come in and check out the collection. Um, for this special event, we have a special workshop going on Frosty Glass that we're doing next weekend as well. If you guys want to look into that and sign up for next weekend, we got a lot of tough stuff. Uh, and we're going to be doing demos next weekend. So this is the end of this weekend. It's starting next Saturday at 12. We'll be back for more demonstrations. And if you have any comments, you can type them into the thing right now and we should get them all in So we do have a question and it's going to be for, are the demo pieces for sale? Um, okay. And the answer to that is, if the pieces can come out of the annealer just fine after cold work, uh, they may be in the store or online. So check back soon. Okay, so if you're looking for a piece at the end of the demonstration, um, you can really just email us. Some of them may not survive the annealer, but we can really let you know if there's interest in those specific pieces. Um, so if you're interested in those pieces, you can email us and we'll get you in touch with us. Okay, so we'll see you guys next week.